What's going on, everybody? Wherever you listen to this podcast, right here, this is episode 75 of the Temper Zone podcast with your host, me, Amir Max, and that's all facts. And um, yeah, we're doing another solo episode, two solo episodes in a row. Um, I'm gonna be honest with you, I was pretty busy this week and it was kind of tricky for me to get a guest on and I was just like, man, you know what, I can do another solo episode, it ain't that hard to do and besides, there is a, um, a lot of things to talk about going on this week, man, and um, I kind of have a, a conclusion as to how I feel about it all, but we'll get to that towards the end of the episode. Um, I first want to talk about uh, the uh, Chiefs-Texans game yesterday. Um, the crowd was booing as the Chiefs and Texans were showing a sign of unity. And, um, you know, I shouldn't be surprised by this, but at the same time, it's just, you know, the signs of the country divided just show more and more. And it, it was on full display last night. And it was funny because the Kansas City Chiefs, they had put out a, um, they put out this video of the, the sign of unity last night and they had the crowd uh, uh, in, in it, but the crowd noise wasn't a boo. It was, they were cheering and like, that's not what happened. There was a, a, a plenty, uh, there was a, a good amount of people there who were booing during that last night, man. And everyone's saying the same thing, man. Uh, it's, this had, this never had anything to do with the flag or disrespecting the flag. It had nothing to do with that. It, it, it solely had to do with race, man. These people, <laughs> where do I start talking about people who boo something like this, man? It's, it is, it's, it's fragility on a level that we, you know, people that are against this will never understand. We will, ne- like, it's, it's truly hard to comprehend that type of ignorance and that type of way of just blocking out such a important issue in this country. You know, just human rights, man. Like, wh- and, and they got the nerve to boo about it. And then people out there are saying, I don't want my sports to be political. I separate the sports from the p- politics. Like we don't come to sports to see all this, and it's like sports has always been this way. Sports has always been tied to politics, whether it's more prevalent now, uh, prevalent now, or whether it you know it was going on in the '60s. Like it's always been going on. Like these protests have always been happening, and I. I um, now it's, you know, the, the, the momentum is stronger than ever before. It truly has. And, um, I've never seen anything like this in sports in, in my 24 years. <laughs> uh, so I mean, it, it can definitely feel that way where all of a sudden sports have gotten political, but as a soccer fan, I mean, politics is always tied into, 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 into soccer and in, in, in a lot of countries. I mean, like, I'm pretty sure uh, Barcelona, Real Madrid, that rivalry was stemmed from politics because most rivalries like that are based on proximity. That's not based on proximity for the most part. That rivalry is based on history and it was tied to politics. So when these people out here are saying, oh, I don't want my sports and politics combined, it's like this is always this has always been going on. It's just that now we have technology, we can see everything that's going on, so everything is just more amplified, and so when we try to compare it to the past, that's not, that's not really fair, because there are so many more eyes and cameras and devices that can catch everything that's going on in our society, so these things have all amplified the way the world works, so when people... <laughs> When people are saying like, well, "Why is this going on? Like, why does Black Lives Matter sign on the on the court?" It's like, man, it's gotten to that point. It's gotten to that point. Once again, look at soccer. They have been saying end racism, like stop racism, and that is solely based on the fact that there has been so many cases of fans disrespecting non-white players. It's it's been a thing for for a long time, 
Whereas with American sports, this is coming from the fact of what's going on in the country. But still, but still, I, I don't, it's, it's insane that people are just so blatantly saying I am racist or I have a form of racism in me. And, and that's what it is. I mean, if you are offended by a player, a black man, <laughs> with Black Lives Matter on the back of his helmet, I mean, I mean, well, I, I can't not think anything else of you but that you're a racist. Why does that bother you so much? And then you have the Black Lives Matter organization. And, and 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 people on the other side love getting that Black Lives Matter. It's like, fam, like, don't you realize, like, we're saying Black Lives Matter? We're not talking about no organization. We are literally saying Black Lives Matter. What you mean an organization? And they want to tie in uh, some protests going on where uh, people who are saying they are part of the Black Lives Matter organization, they're taking things just a little too far. I've seen those videos. And then they want to paint that picture and say that that this is what it really stands for. Like, how could you say that? Like, how could you possibly think that that is what that stands for and why people say Black Lives Matter? They ain't saying it because of organization, man. They saying it because of police brutality in this country and how black people are treated in general, man. I mean, this is just insane. I, I, I. I, I can't believe it is it, it, it's it's to this point, but I can believe it's to this point. This country is full of some ignorant, dumb, stupid people, man, and it will never change because these old people gotta die out, man, straight up. And I said it before, and it sounds kind of morbid, but it's true, man. These people will never change out of their ways, man, and that's why it's important that the youth sees the diversity and sees things in a different way than even I did growing up because these problems have are still getting corrected day by day so someone who's in their 30s that's it they're gonna be the way they are <laughs> like it's gonna be hard to change a 30 year old on those type of things I'm not saying it's not possible but the older you get man the more <laughs> jaded you become I feel I don't know I feel like it's very hard to someone to change out of their ways when they're 40 if they've been racist their whole life like I, I just don't I don't see how you can convert somebody like that I, it would take it would take something extremely personal for that to happen I mean um like like a movie like American History X uh that's you know that's a, a great movie um go watch that movie it's kind of just kind of uh, explaining what I you know a, a guy who was racist and he got out of prison met a friend who was black and it completely changed every way he looked at black people and it like he was dude was a neo-nazi you know what i'm saying went into prison for a hate crime met a black dude in prison and and it changed the they became great friends and it forever changed how he just looked at race and and and, and, and so it's, it's it's possible for for people to change is what i'm trying to say <laughs> it's possible for people to change um and I don't want to paint everybody in Kansas City like they're racist. Um, but it's just another reminder that when you're a part of the athletics of the arts, they don't want you talking. They just want you to do what you're supposed to do. Shut up and dance, boy. Shut up, boy. Dance, boy. That's that's what they want. That's what they want from you. One minute out of line and that's it, man. I'm, I'm quoting a song that I released, What Side You On. I have a whole verse about this. One minute out of line of punishment to say, who fear to face the truth? It's apparent someone hate us. You know what I mean? And um, they don't want to hear about it because these things are tied to truth, man. You know, the truth hurts. And so whether these people don't realize it or not, this country has a problem. And, and if these people do see the problem, they want to brush it over with whatever narrative or dialogue that they found on whatever website that spews bullshit, you know? So it, it, it is it is something so complex and so intricate, this situation. This is crowd booing. Um, and it just it shed a lot of light on me, man. Um, it, it, it shed a light on stuff that I, you know, I already felt and... Um, 
you know, to all those people that see all that stuff in the sports going on, man. I mean, hey, that's just a sign of the times, huh? Just a sign of the times. Don't know what to tell you. It is what it is. It's what's going on right now. And these people want to use their platform because they are very prominent people. People look up to these athletes. They look up to these artists. So when they use these platforms for these things, it will do something. So how can you be surprised that black men, (laughs) a predominantly black league, like the NFL, the NBA, to do what they're doing and you to get upset? What are you, What is going on here? Like, you know, like, I don't, you know, I just, it's crazy. You, you don't want anything from us when we talk about anything personal. We, You want us to be on your agenda at all times, these artists, these, these athletes. It's just, it's just crazy, man. They really just want them to shut up and play. They really do. Cause the crowd was cheering back in the business after the whole, after after the um sign of uh, equality um that they did during the game. So, yeah, man, a country divided. It really is. Um, if last night <laughs> really didn't show that for you, uh, I don't know what will, man. Cause you know sports is sports is supposed to you know bring the people together and sport. You know, and, and, you know, seeing people go like, oh, I can't watch, I can't watch this anymore uh I, i'm done being i'm done being an nba fan it's like man how are you even a basketball fan to begin with if that's how easily you just stop watching like who are you who are these people who are consider themselves basketball fans football fans and get offended because they see black lives matter equality liberation on the back of jerseys what is wrong with you something's wrong with you man anyway i I'm, I'm digressing man <laughs> um we're going to talk about some other crazy things and how they uh, lose our fo- uh, focus on what's going on in this world. Um, <laughs> uh, two things, Joe Budden and Odell Beckham Jr. Um, Joe Budden, man, you know, he's got a lot of stuff that has crept up in his from his past um, with domestic abuse. Uh, but there was the other thing that came out about him uh, playing with his dog. Uh, yeah, playing with his dog, playing with his dog in that way, yeah, yeah, um, and, uh, Odell Beckham was in the news, uh, for a girl that allegedly said that, uh, he likes to be, uh, doo-dooed on, it's just crazy, man, some wild news, those are both some wild, (laughs) some wild topics to get out in the, into the world, man, and, um, (laughs) As I see football season come back, I see these crazy headlines go on. I I I I want to remind y'all to please not lose sight on everything going on. Um, I do see a good amount of people still fighting the good fight and still keeping up the momentum that has been built from this year, and I'm very happy to see that. It's very good that we're keeping this rolling, but. <laughs> Headlines like these, man, and, 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 and sports being back the way they are, it just it just makes me feel like we're going to eventually lose track of every all this momentum that we built for equality. And I, I hope that doesn't happen because, I mean, even with like, you know, with the sports, I basketball and football, they I have Black Lives Matter posting all over. So it's going to be in people's heads. But when these headlines come out, man, I mean, let's just break down just these things. Um, with Joe Budden, man, <laughs> I, I I thought he was joking because on the Joe Budden podcast, he made a joke saying he would he would <laughs> play with his dog. Ah, it's just gross. Like, uh, I I no 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 no. It's weird, man. He joked about it. It was funny. Like, it, but like it was funny the way they joked about it. It's because it's gross. Like, I I am a, a firm believer that. You can joke about anything, and so when he there is a clip on the Joe Budden podcast where he does make that joke about it. I I, I remember at the time I'm I listen to Joe Budden podcast all the time. I was very convinced, and 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 I thought at the time, I think at the time that he was joking. It was a joke, uh, but then there was um, his ex came out saying that uh, his baby mama uh, came out saying that uh, he yes indeed played with dogs privates he would do that and uh yeah not a good look man 
not a good look. And it's crazy. It's so weird, man, how Joe Budden had a bunch of domestic abuse charges, yet this was the the one that really took it over the edge, man. <laughs> man, you, you, I mean, I know there's animal lovers out there, man. I mean, <laughs> I understand, but wow. I mean, this was the straw that broke the camel's back. <laughs> you know what I mean? Not the domestic abuse. I'm not saying any of it's true. It's all alleged. I don't know what to believe. I really don't. Um, And I'm going to stand on the I don't know. Uh, cause it, uh, but <laughs> it's funny that, the dog is what really did it. Um, I guess because it's it's easier to talk about. Domestic abuse is very difficult to talk about. It's you know it hits home for people, unfortunately. And 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 um, I think when it comes to these things, we will talk about Joe Budden and the dog touching because that's that's a little easier to joke around with. And and it does because it's like who does that? Just like with Odell, like who who. Whose fetish is that to get doodled on, man? Like this is crazy. I mean, <laughs> I mean, I saw like a funny clip with uh, uh, Portnoy uh, and uh, Deion Sanders. He's on barstool now, and he's like, <laughs> Portnoy asked him like, "Have you ever seen anything like 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 this? Like, cause you've been around. You know, he's prime time. Like, he's been around. He's probably heard in, about some crazy wild sex capades that have gone on and." You know, wild fetishes that people have, but never he, you know, <laughs> Deion Sanders like, never doo-doo, <laughs> never doo-doo. I thought, that, <laughs> I thought that was so funny, man. I, I mean, these headlines are just, ugh. The thing that is just nasty and unfortunate about it is that it's, you know, it's, it's black men. And, you know, these alleged cases are coming out and people are trying to, you know, tarnish their name. And for the most part, I don't believe in none of this shit. I don't believe in the Odell stuff. I don't believe, I don't, for the, for the most part, the Joe Budden stuff is very tricky. Um, I, I don't believe the dog, the dog story. I don't, I just, I don't, I just, I can't believe, I know people don't, <laughs> I know people let the dog lick their face. I'm not, I, I, I'm not, I, I didn't grow up with a dog, man. I did not grow up with a dog. I don't, I, uh, but I don't think anyone who loves dogs would do that. That's just weird, bro. That's just some weird shit right there, man. Oh, man. what I, I'm thinking to myself randomly, what's weirder? Uh, getting doo-dooed on or, 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 or playing with a dog? What's weirder? <laughs> that's, a, that's a question I don't want to think about and answer. Eh, both are disgusting. Oh, oh God. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, that's a good... Uh, uh, would you rather question but anyway <laughs> i you know what i'll say man uh with all these crazy headlines going on jesus i um is to just you know it's it's just weird seeing people try to take down you know these people and, 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 and more specifically with that no jumper podcast uh with those two girls man uh they are if that's what that podcast is going to do man i mean get that shit out of here that is it's just so so toxic and just not, just ugh. Like, I can't believe people listen to that shit. I can, but it's just weird that people are, like, to listen to that whole thing, man. Like, these, like, when I, I was seeing, like, how they talk to the mic and all that stuff. Like, they're just not that professional. Just, ugh. I just, I'm not a fan of, like, what that podcast stands for. Um, those two girls. I, I don't hate Adam Twenty Two. I don't have a problem with Adam Twenty Two. I, I like his content and I tune into it because he's a good interviewer. But those two, man, if they're just gonna keep exploiting people, in particular black people, because that's what it seems what's going on right now. I mean, it, I am I'm not about that. I'm not because all these allegedness and these alleged cases are still hitting because even though it's a lie, these things are always going to stay around, man. No matter how much Odell says that it's not true and i you know you see him playing along with the jokes and that's the reason why i don't think it's true and i mean if he's owning it like this then you know that's the ultimate defense mechanism is just to play along with it so yeah man just <laughs> crazy headlines right there man i couldn't believe both those headlines popped up man um but the thing with the joe budden case is that he is going into uh, he's exiting his Spotify deal and all these things just so happen to be popping up. So that's my thing about it, because the domestic abuse stuff has been out forever. 
I mean, I remember that clip of Joe Budden joking about touching his dog. That came out like a year ago. And I thought I, I, I just was like, oh, he's joking. And then it came back out. But then it was written on paper from his ex. It's just, you know, it's just a, a lot of nasty stuff going on. Just a lot of nasty stuff. All right. And that's the main reason I brought up those two. Um, just nasty. Uh, what's going on out here in these streets, man, when there's so much bigger fish to fry, so much bigger things to go on, man. Um. But yeah, I want to address one more thing before we close off this podcast, man. Uh, to be honest with yourself um, about who is supporting you. I saw a great clip from Wallow about this. And I kind of wanted to just go off on uh, what he was saying, man. You know, he, he was kind of just talking about how, you know, we as artists, just anyone in general, see the signs of who is vibing with us, who likes what we do. I've, I mean, and, and it's funny because like, I always tell people your friends and your close fam, your close, your, 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 your close friends and your family don't expect them to be their biggest supporters. Don't expect them to like your music the most because it could be anybody. Not everything you make is going to be clicking with those close people just because they are fam and they are close friends does not mean they're going to like it. And a lot of the times, I feel like all the time, people aren't going to tell you straight up how they feel about art because I, I think people understand now, I think people my age, I think, oh, if they care enough, understand that art comes from a very deep place. And so when you criticize someone's art, it's almost like you are criticizing them as a person. And so I think a lot of people just stray away from ever, you know, say anything bad, but I mean, that's up to you as the artist to see the signs of the people that truly support you, truly vibe with the music that you make, you know, don't lie to yourself, you can't lie to yourself about these things, you know, you gotta swallow that, that pill, and it's a tough pill to swallow when you realize, like, oh, wow, like, only three of my friends, (laughs) out of, like, how many friends I have truly like my music, or only half of my friends like my music, I mean, that, you know, or you could have a situation where all your friends like your music, but it doesn't span out of that, like, no one, like, you're making music that only your friends would get, because you're making all these references, and and now you have blocked yourself out from spreading out, I don't know, but, you know, there are ways where, you know, you gotta read the signs and who's supporting you, and you gotta remember, man, ain't nobody owe you nothing in this world, man, um, a lot of people think they are the center of the universe. Breaking news, you're not. Um, this is a big universe here. It's a big planet. And we are just a tiny speck in it trying to make a difference in it, man, in some way, shape, or form. That's the way it is, man. And so you got to find your role. You have to understand who you are. And for some people, they just going to have to go through it to figure it out. You can, you know what I mean? Um, and I think I addressed a little bit of that in the last episode. Um, but I, I, I I truly think, you know, you have to be aware of those signs, man, because they're there (laughs) body language, man. It's undefeated. Um, being able just to read someone's just way to respond to something like, Oh, yo, did you like that song? Yeah, it was, it was good. It was good. That's it. Whereas if you say, yo, what'd you think of that song, man? You don't even have to say it to some people like, yo, that right there, bro. Wow. Like, yo, I'll tell you, like, like from what your other stuff, like that one might be your best or, you know what I mean? Like people make it very, very clear when they like something. So just be aware of the signs. If people don't say nothing, that don't mean they hate it. But, you know, if they told you in the past they like it and they ain't telling you nothing since, then you might have to, you know, re- reconfigure some things in what you're doing. You know what I mean? It's not on, you know, like I said. It's not on, you know, you, there's no one to blame in this game but yourself. You know what I mean? You, we are here to, to, to do our job and to do our part. Um, so with that being the case, man, you just have to understand that some people are going to like it. Some people won't. Some people are just not going to care. And, and if you move along that way, you'll understand that because certain songs are just not for everybody, man. And you're not going to end up pleasing everybody. Um that's just how it goes, man. That's just how it goes. Um, but yeah, I'm gonna end it on that note, man. Um, episode 75 of the Tempest Zone podcast feels pretty crazy doing an episode under 30 minutes, but um, I felt like I said what I needed to say on this episode, man. 
There's a lot of crazy shit going on in this world still. Um, you know, but don't forget to have fun, man, and live your life. You know what I mean? As much as, like, you know, you got to stay aware of the crazy stuff going on, you, you still got to have fun, man. You know, and I think a lot of people might be getting too in their, you know, wrapped in their brains with the stuff going on. They, you know, they lose sight of all, you know, having fun and all that. It's like, don't, don't do that to yourself. Still, 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 still feel, you know, joy in some form or fashion. There's always a way to find that. So, yeah, I'll end it on that note, y'all. Um, we'll be back next week with another episode with a guest or without a guest. I don't, I'm not sure yet. We just playing it on the fly right now. But we will have an episode out next week. That's for sure, all right? So make sure y'all tune in, all right? Peace. Peace.